This video was brought to you by Private Internet Access. Ah, the wonderful world of faith healers. Those godly millionaires with supernatural healing powers who, for some reason, never seem to work in children's cancer wards. I've seen legs grow out, I've seen, we've seen cancers healed, and blind eyes open, and deaf ears open. They love to talk themselves up, but what happens when you dig a little deeper? When you look behind the curtain? Let's take a look at a couple and see how their claims stand up to scrutiny. First up, we have the evangelical faith healer Todd Bentley, the pastor who kicks, punches, and headbutts people better. I'm the juggernaut, bitch! There's this older lady worshiping right in front of the platform, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face <laughs> with your biker boot. And I went like this. And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. But hey, at least it's slightly less odd than the pastor who cures people's ailments by farting on them. The wind of God! The wind of God! Sometimes I just pray in my room for four hours like that. Well, you haven't wasted your life then. Just before it was revealed that Bentley was leaving his wife for one of his female staff members, his ministry was skyrocketing. He exploded into the national spotlight with up to 10,000 nightly attendees at his revivals in Lakeland, Florida, which were broadcast around the globe to millions of viewers on God TV. And he catalyzed this preposterous popularity with preposterous claims, which his desperate audience gobbled up. 25 years of ministry in 73 countries, I've seen 37 people raised from the dead. Holy butt-suckling bat squatch! That high scores 12 times as many as Jesus! But at least Jesus himself raised from the dead. Try topping that, Todd. One time I was preaching in Africa and I died and had a heart attack and died. Came out of my body. I died. Died, died, died. And guess what? Got raised from the dead. <laughs> When ABC's Primetime investigated the hype, however, here's what they found. This boy's being healed of crippling spinal bifida from birth in the name of Jesus. Loose, 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 loose. Straighten, 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 straighten. We're going to believe God that he is receiving healing. It was an emotional moment. And yes, I laid my hands on him and I said, thank you for what you're doing, God. I feel like I am like the most strength I've ever had in my body. Alex so desperately wants to be healed. Yet here he is later that night as he stumbles to the ground. Some healing is partial. Not everybody is healed. How convenient. Yeah. And when they asked Todd for any kind of medical verification for his miracles, he sent them a binder of heavily redacted information with names, addresses, and hospital info censored out. And no, Todd didn't have to withhold that info because of HIPAA or anything, unless his ministry's a medical institution, in which case he'd be practicing medicine without a license. That's a felony. And despite his divine healing powers, Bentley's own wife at the time was hobbling around with a missing kneecap, something a legend like Todd should have had no problem healing. The the Oprah Winfrey Network even caught wind of Bentley, yet despite how much woo they're responsible for spreading, even they couldn't find a miracle. Here's what they found. Debbie and Sherry drove here from Savannah, paying around $600 each to be part of Todd Bentley's revival. This conference is their attempt to cure their mother of cancer. They ran out of money for chemotherapy and have now placed their mother's health in God's hands. Steve Felton, too, has been waiting for tonight expectantly. First, a car crash when he was 18 left him with a brain injury and a speech impediment. Then, 15 years ago, he fell off a roof and was paralyzed in his lower body. Doctors told Steve he would never walk again. I want to stand up and push my chair out the door. God told him that he would walk in the last 10 minutes of the last service. It's been a long time since I've seen anyone just want something so badly, and not just want it, but just believe. Like, that is true, true faith. Every time I look in his direction, I get emotional, and I just hope he's not disappointed. With dozens of resurrections and thousands of miracles allegedly under his ministry's belt, surely cancer and partial paralysis pose little challenge to Todd. Unless his miracles only work when a camera crew isn't watching his every move and following up on the results. What in the world can that be? What? Where? As Todd comes down the line and draws nearer to Carol, Debbie, and Sherry, Carol is literally shaking with expectation. 
Her very life is on the line. Steve has entered a different state. It's the last 10 minutes of the last night, the time he believes he will walk again. So, how did Todd fare? Carol went back to Georgia. When we last spoke, Debbie and Sherry told me her cancer had steadily been getting worse. Even to this day, Todd Bentley is still at it, but his ministry took a massive hit after it was revealed that he'd had a decades-long history of sexual misconduct, including with multiple interns of his, both male and female, some of whom were struggling financially and he was in a position of power over. He attempted to buy some of their silence or threaten them with legal action if they spoke out. And this goes all the way back to when he was a teenager when he sexually assaulted a significantly younger boy. Oh, and his church's leadership knew all of this and actively covered it up. All of this just goes to show that just because someone seems to have a divine anointing doesn't mean that there's some sacred supernatural phenomenon going on. One reason that I make videos like this debunking extremist positions is because I care deeply about our democratic freedoms and I worry about the growth of Christian nationalism. Women in the US who miscarry are already being convicted of murder and LGBT rights very well may be the next thing on the Supreme Court's chopping block. Women are deleting their period tracking apps, stocking up on Plan B and medical abortion pills, and people are taking to the streets to protest the rise of authoritarianism, which is why now more than ever it is crucial that you protect your privacy. Back before I started this channel, I worked in IT as a security admin for Texas A&M, and one of the ways that I protected my own privacy was by using a virtual private network or VPN. And my VPN of choice for over 10 years now has been private internet access. It's basically a program that can run on just about any computer, or I even use it on my phone, which changes your IP address and hides all of your internet traffic in a secure encrypted tunnel, protecting your privacy from your internet service provider, your network admin, or even from government censorship, which is why so many atheists living under authoritarian theocracies use it. And unlike other VPNs, private internet access doesn't store user data or log your internet traffic. So in the past, when courts have subpoenaed them for records, they've come up empty handed. You get Nothing! Their business model is literally to protect your privacy, and they do it really well, with world-class next-generation servers in over 83 countries. It's super easy to use, but is also the most customizable VPN on the market if you want to configure it, which probably explains why it's so popular with over 30 million downloads. And right now, you can get it up to 82% off. That's barely two bucks a month. And if you sign up using my link in the description below, you'll get an additional three months completely free. Plus, there's a 30-day risk-free 100% money back guarantee and their 24 seven support team is super responsive. So click that link, sign up today and start taking back your privacy. Number two, W.V. Grant. In my last video, I showed you how some of the dishonest tricks of W.V. Grant were exposed by ABC's Primetime and later by the magician Darren Brown, but those weren't the only shady tricks he was caught using. In his 1987 book, The Faith Healers, James Randi recounts watching trucks pull up outside of Grant's revival meetings and unload a couple dozen wheelchairs. As people with canes and crutches hobbled into the church, they were placed in the wheelchairs and rolled to the front of the service. Once the healings began, Grant would enthusiastically command them in Jesus' name to rise up and walk, which they did, but were already able to do. Randy also witnessed Grant claiming to heal people's leg and back pain by miraculously lengthening one of their disproportionately short legs. The only catch is he used an old magician's leg lengthening trick. This account was confirmed in 1991 when ABC caught Grant using the same tricks. And when we questioned the people Grant had lifted out of wheelchairs, everyone we talked to said they could walk all along. Could you walk at all before you came? So this little boy, who is in fact confined to a wheelchair for life, left the service without any miracles offered for him. Now, one interesting side note about the leg lengthening trick, there are actually many ways to pull this trick off. One of which the magician Darren Brown demonstrated in his documentary Miracles for Sale. If you want, I can do an entire video just on this trick and the many faith healers who use it. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd like to see. But to put it bluntly, it is absolutely the mark of a charlatan. In the words of the health journalist Andrew Skolnick, who helped Randy expose W.V. Grant back in 1987, faith healers are potential killers. There is no greater harm nor fraud than medical quackery. You can sell people bogus gold mines and they lose money, but they can get more money. When you rob someone of their health, they can't get that back. 
Okay, so Grant may not be legit, but surely Benny Hinn, the man with the magic coat who packs out stadiums with desperate believers, surely he's the real deal, right? Well, unfortunately, every time that Benny Hinn has been investigated, there's been a trail of bodies in his wake, of the vulnerably desperate who trusted him, opting for faith healing rather than medical care. And as he continues this legal genocide for profit, we'll probably never know exactly how high his kill count actually is. But here are just a few of the many deaths that he's responsible for. When he laid hands on Laura Twilley two years ago, she told everyone it was a miracle cure. I have cancer all over my body and uh, I haven't been able to walk at all or pretty much stand and I'm doing pretty good now. <laughs> she even threw away her cancer fighting drugs, but within two months she was dead. First blood. She is basically a walking dead woman. She should not be alive because through both of her lungs is cancer. The doctors are overwhelmed the fact that she is still alive and still breathing. Susan Norcain, her oncologist, rejected all these claims. Susan had an unpredictable form of cancer that was stable at the time of the crusade, but deteriorated afterwards, and Susan died nine months later. Perfectly whole. Don't kill. Expect the miracle. Dear Jesus, the Lord's going to touch you. Young boy, the Lord's gonna touch you, sweetheart. It didn't happen, I was not even discouraged. I, I know it's God's plan. We believe the tree growth of tumor has been dissolved completely. This is not a rich family, yet they were persuaded by Benny Hinn's TV appeals to pledge a hundred dollars a month. In his presence, the urge to give was overwhelming. You know, I can stake my life on Pastor Benny Hinn's words. God spoke to me last night at the Colosseum Center where the crusade was going on, and he said, donate him another $2,000, and which I'm going to do it. Seven weeks after the crusade, Ashneel Prakash was dead. Triple kill! Her daughter Jackie says Joyce too was persuaded to turn her back on her doctors. One of the staff had told her she did not need her medicine anymore because Benny Hinn says she was healed. What did her doctor say when she decided then that she was not going to have the chemotherapy? He was very upset because she needed the chemo. Joyce Vaughn died less than a year after she stood on stage with him. Killing spree. A man told me one day, he said, you are better than uh, P.T. Barnum. I said, oh, well, thank you. A proud day for you and your family. That's his house up there over my shoulder, overlooking the Pacific Ocean on some of the most expensive residential property in the U.S. We've consulted real estate agents, and they tell us that if that house went on the market today, the selling price would be about $10 million. And the private jet the ministry leases for him, the presidential hotel suites, the reported seven-figure salary, and a picture emerges of a self-proclaimed spiritual leader with an obvious taste for the material world. Has anyone really been healed in Benny Hinn's ministry? In our research, there's not been one person that was healed. I can tell you here under the anointing, It'll never come back. We have a victim's hotline where people call us with their stories, and the stories are endless of people who had loved ones die after they were proclaimed on television that they were healed. Killionaire! Number four, Todd White. Todd White is part of an extremely lucrative circle of charismatic pastors. He offers faith healing on the streets to wow his social media followers, and his favorite trick is, you guessed it, the leg trick. I'm gonna pray and Jesus is going to grow your leg out. Right leg, I command you grow in Jesus' name. Although he performs it slightly differently. Look. <laughs> Again, let me know if you want to, nah, screw it, fine. I'll just do a video on it. Just smash that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can see it when it comes out. As I was saying, Todd White, legs, he loves legs, oh, wow. but watch what happens when he tries to heal an actual amputee. Put my hand on, on both your knees, okay? He didn't have any legs. Father, I thank you for brand new bones, ligaments, tendons, in Jesus' name, God. I've seen legs grow out, I've seen, we've seen cancers healed, and blind eyes open, and deaf ears open. What I haven't ever seen is a leg from a stump grow out. Oh, you say? Womp womp. In Jesus' name, we command both of these legs to grow. You'll never see them grow if you don't start praying for them. This is something that I have yet to see that I really want to. So I know if my faith gets stronger, this kind of stuff will happen every day. It will. He said it can. Oh, oh, I see. 
running away. Number five, Andrew Womack. Back in March 2020, as the world was shutting down in hopes of preventing the global pandemic, and long before there was any treatment or vaccine for COVID, one lone hero stood in the gaps with a surefire solution. I have absolutely zero zilch, nada, fear about this. What a legend. What was his secret? As an individual who is standing on the Word of God, I can reach out and touch anybody who's got sickness or something on them. Jesus said the works that he did should we do also, and I believe that I am just as protected as Jesus is. Oh, good Lord. Instead of having this fear about everybody contaminating me, man, I look at it this way, that I've got the supernatural power of God living on the inside of me, and if I come in with sickness, I can reach out and touch That's them, you. and my healing will be transmitted instead of their sickness. Well, at least he didn't tell his followers that they could be faith guarded from catching a virus from another person, right? You should have zero fear about you reaching out and contacting a person because, again, Jesus did it. Oh, this can't end well. According to the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, there are now 22 confirmed cases of COVID-19, a total of 34 probable cases, all linking back to Andrew Womack Ministries. His ministry is all about healing, and yet he's bringing disease into our small community. <laughs> Oh, and ironically, because of this, he had to cancel a faith healing seminar that summer. Womack Ministries has since moved conferences online, including this healing event in August that was supposed to happen in person. But if anything, Andrew Womack got off easy. A faith healing pastor in Cameroon claimed that he could cure people with COVID by praying over them too. But unfortunately for him, he caught the virus and died. <laughs> Franklin's followers, however, believed so firmly in his message of miracles that they refused to bury his body, waiting instead for a miraculous resurrection. Eventually, police had to be called in to push through the crowd and bury the body. And in case you think that prayers for a resurrection are just an Africa thing, in 2019, the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, aka the Hogwarts of Christianity, where people are trained in the divine arts of prophecy, speaking in tongues, and miraculous healing, they made headlines when one of their worship leaders lost her two-year-old daughter, and they all proceeded to attempt unsuccessfully to resurrect the child. Now, I have nothing but sympathy for the desperate and vulnerable who flock to these faith healers because I've been in their shoes and I used to believe all of it myself. But I make these videos and I speak out because I know that there are people who can know better, who maybe don't know how this stuff works or realize that they're being taken advantage of. And I think that the more of us that speak out and share these stories, the more we can encourage the world to think a little more rationally and to avoid falling for snake oil charlatans like these. If you wanna help me with this goal of spreading scientific skepticism and critical thinking, you can make a per video pledge on patreon.com slash holy kool-aid. If you want to help me in the immediate term, you can go to PayPal and make a one-time donation there or through Venmo. Thank you guys so much for your support. You're awesome. Dare to be curious, but don't drink the Kool-Aid. Boom! Bah. Finish it, Lord! <laughs>